Hi, welcome to my revision channel. This is representation and audience theories for media studies. These will be useful for when you use your case studies in the exam because using this will help you get to this. Everything that we see in the media is portrayed differently to what we see in real life. They show an exaggerated version of reality, but it does not define reality itself due to different views we see of the same subject. The media will reinforce representations to make the audience assume things about a specific group, creating an intended message that they want to give out to an audience. For example, some adults will be represented as old, lazy and weak, but some action films will represent old people as heroic, bold and strong. However, the media can change a representation of a specific group to reinforce a different view from the audience that they may be used to seeing in the media which is a counter type. They may look like the stereotype, but they are actually the opposite. So like Legally Blonde. Male Gaze Theory by Laura Mulvey. The audience portray women as sexual objects. Women end up looking at other women from a male's perspective. For example, um, taking Nicki Minaj's Anaconda music video. Women are forced to look from a male's perspective when looking at this music video due to women being sexualized. This is because of scopophilia. This is Sigmund Freud's view which is having sexual pleasure just from looking at someone. So women are forced to look at this because men will have a voyeuristic view. The sexualization of women in the media is currently a hegemonic representation of women. However, there are pluralist representations of women that are opposed to the stereotypes, such as the Hunger Games. Katniss Everdeen is a countertype. Some useful case studies for representations of gender. Any Carl's Jr. Um, advert, they sexualize women in a lot of their adverts. Blood lines and a print text would be the sun. Tessa Perkins stereotype theory. She makes five assumptions. Not, everyone, not every stereotype is bad. There can be good ones. They are not always about minority groups. They can be also about upper class. Then what we been cannon fodder for snobs like you? Judging people like me from your ivory towers with no thought about why we do what we do. We ain't got much choice. You get me? And if we was born with the same silver spoon of our asses, we'd do just as well as you. They can be held about one's own group. So we'll have stereotypes in specific places, such as in school, in work, based on our own based on our own assumptions. The media will portray similar stereotypes, which will influence our opinion of what we say about these groups. They are not rigid or unchanging. Once stereotypes are made, they're hard to change, and they are not always false. They all have some truth in them. If not, there wouldn't be no way to make a representation of that stereotype. George Gerbner's cultivation theory is basically saying the more time they spend looking at media texts, the more likely they are going to believe what's being portrayed as social reali re reality. Reality. <laughs> They'll become desensitized. So, for example, taking Grand Theft Auto, if they keep playing that game, they will be less sensitive less feared and less triggered when being exposed to violence that means if they mention if they see violence in real life for example guy getting beaten up or tv or bbc news where they show someone getting stabbed then they will believe that violence is morally okay and will be less triggered traditional reasons for sharing media stories would be for moral and informative values but now new reasons for sharing media will be because of money the more you see these things the more money that companies will get from sharing all of these stories and you will become desensitized so the companies will benefit from you getting cultivated so good case studies attacker was influenced by violent games age young people being influenced by opinion leaders so celebrities rappers Grime rappers such as Stormzy, Skepta, they talk about drugs, violence, you know, that sort of thing. The young people are influenced by this because they will begin listening to all this stuff, enjoy this kind of thing, and will, be desens and will become desensitized by all of the things that, are talking, that they are talking about and will believe this is okay. Hypodermic needle theory, this is quite old. This wouldn't be as useful, but I'm just going to throw it out there anyway because it's a well known theory. The mass media inject ideas into the passive audience and they make them believe what is being portrayed as reality. So you, the first time this was used was when 
a podcast called War of the Worlds was released and everyone believed that there were actually aliens coming down. There was no mass media at the time, no internet or anything like that to search up if it was true, which meant that no one could question the text and believe it. This is useful for case studies like events, so how ISIS shook the world. They got propaganda videos to recruit, to get recruits and to get them to agree with their way of thinking. John Baudrillard's hyperreality theory, which is where the more the consumer is being engaged with the hyperreal world, they will become unable to distinguish the difference between fantasy and reality. The media is sensationalized and filled with idealistic representations to grab your attention. It is an exaggerated portrayal of reality. Baudrillard argues that the media re reality is now the reality of today. The more we see this media reality, our perception of what we thought was reality will change due to the influence of the media. This will affect children. So Disneyland is presented as imaginary in order to make us believe that the rest is real. So children see this all the time on the media and many, and because of the films that they watch, Disney films, they'll believe that this is real and that they're actually, when they actually go there, they are actually experiencing all of this and believe it's real. So this is media's reality of women, photoshopped, different, but this is actually the reality. But women nowadays are unable to distinguish the actual reality of this. Okay, so now we're moving on to audience. Audiences choose different texts depending on their needs, their age, ethnicity, gender, etc. Media texts have specific audiences that will engage with their texts. The construction of the audience and the way it positions their audience will make the audience have different messages depending on their experiences and culture. It can either be negative or positive. There will be either a passive audience, so they receive the text, they observe it and don't respond. Like when you send a text but then you see red and no reply. Or you have an active audience where they receive the text, engage and interact with it because maybe it's controversial. So Stuart Hall's reception theory, the media texts are encoded by the producer, they're filled with meaningful messages, the audience decode the text, interpreting it in the way, in different ways, and maybe not the same way as the d producer wants it to be interpreted. So for example, we'll take this as our text, 100% love, zero calories, right. So some audiences may have a dominant reading about this. They will agree that definitely there will be no calories in this because it's Diet Coke. Some will have a negotiated reading. Mm, they'll feel on and off about it. They'll accept some of it and, gr and agree, yes, it's Diet Coke, less sugar, more love. But then they'll disagree saying probably be zero calories but more chemicals. The oppositional reading is the complete opposite of what the producer intends the audience to, to decode. They completely disagree with everything that the producer is trying to say. So they'll probably, so the, aud the audience with the oppositional reading will completely degree, disagree that it's 0% love and they'll completely disagree with the amount with this and believe all of this is false. Bloomer and Katz, uses and gratifications theory, is where audiences are the most active if they fulfill their needs to help them with issues, emotional satisfaction and relaxation. Diversion or escapism is being able to escape from the mundanity of everyday life and being able to relax. Personal identity, the audience can compare their lives to it. Couples that watch 500 days 500, 500 seconds of summer. Oh my god, I wrote 500 seconds. <laughs> I was thinking of five sauce. Oh my god. This is supposed to say 500 days of summer and coincidentally have the same story. If you've seen 500 seconds of summer, not five, no. If you've seen 500 days of summer, it's really cliche and some people will really relate as they've may, as they may have had these feelings before and had this dilemma in their love life. Social interaction, integration, texts that allow people to talk to other people and feel part of a community. So for example, Riverdale, 13 Reasons Why, or Big Brother are water cooler television texts. 
So something interesting or pivotal in the episode will be really shocking. And the next day you will go to the water cooler, water cooler, for example, and talk about how interesting and surprising the episode was. Or surveillance and information needs. What's going on in the world? So for example, what Donald Trump is gonna do next. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So he ordered them into the most important to the least important. In order to obtain this, the audience will need to fulfill all of these. They need to fulfill all of those below to get to the top. This links to the young Rubicum. This links to the young and Rubicum's four C's. The young and Rubicum four C's says that we in this world have seven different types of audiences. Okay, you have the aspirer, the reformer, the explorer, the succeeder, the resigned, the struggler, and the mainstream. Pause this now to read what is being said about these different types of audiences. Two-step flow theory and opinion leaders by Kat and Lazarsfield. So the theory is whether mass media is passed to audiences in two steps. Step one, the mass media sources flow to influential people, which can be anyone, such as celebrities, friends, politicians. And then step two is the opinion leaders pass on the ideas to others along with their own opinion and interpretation of the text. This could be to friends and family. And friends and family will be influenced by the opinion leader's interpretation too. And it will keep passing on and on and on. So this is the example. And you can also say Ellen is an opinion leader. And the audience are influenced by her opinion. Thank you for listening and I hope these theories will be beneficial in the exam and they will be useful to apply for your case studies. I will post a video on how to use these theories in your case studies and also I will post a link of this slideshow in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, subscribe, like, comment and see you guys, bye bye!